Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to do a dial of Procaster Lite. It's the PL100 series. I'm noticing from a quite yellowed price tag that back in the day, whatever back in the day was, this was a $50 purchase. It's a beautiful reel. It's in nice condition. It's been kept well. It was made in Japan. It's a high speed retrieve. And uh, we're going to take it apart and service it. Uh, it's usually something of this caliber. You just want to make sure it's clean and the drags are right. and. Uh, and that everything is, is going well underneath. So we'll start by taking the side plate off. There's two screws to do that. These are what I call thumb screws. You can just break it a little bit and then usually you can remove them by hand. And I'll uh, take the bottom one off here. And then we can pull the side plate. Now, I did a check just before we started to make sure the reel was operating properly so I didn't have to go looking for crazy stuff. Here we go. So we have a spool, we have a beautiful clean case, we have a bushing in the back, and we'll go ahead and service that part so we can get that out of the way. We're going to take some, some grease here and just put some grease back into that spool bushing there. And then we have an axle in the back with two brakes, one of which happens to be on my table at the moment. So I wasn't paying that good attention and when I took that that uh, line out and wrapped around those brakes. So you want to make sure that the brakes are set in as you go to reinstall. And the reason for that is if they're set out, you may trap them and uh, be unable to put the spool back in because those brakes are going to ride on this ring in the center here. So you want to make sure that that goes in properly. I always hate these little lines here because typically they'll get trapped in the frame. In this case, we're fine with that. Okay, well, we might as well service this while we're at it. This is your level line feature. This is the drive of the worm gear here. We're gonna put a little bit of grease on that. That's running on a worm gear here, so we can put a little bit of, of oil behind for that bushing. Put a little bit of oil on there. And then what I like to do is pull the cap while we have it off in this side here for the pole. Make sure that we get some weathering on that pole as well because that pole is the piece that's turning and you need to make sure that that stays oiled so that it turns freely. There's also a little washer inside the pole here. Kind of hard to see but you want to make sure that's centered when you go to put the cap back in. And then there's a weep hole on that cap in case you put too, too much oil. Oh, just drop the cap again. Tight quarters to, to work with. I'll take that washer, put that inside the cap. That washer is stuck on my finger at the moment there. the cap at least now if I can get just get it centered there we go now let's try this again so that's what you want to do on the surface of a worm unless you notice that it's dirty uh, just go right ahead and oil it oil your worm grease your metal drive put a drop of oil behind there last piece on the Spool then, you just want to put a little bit of grease onto the spool. Don't need to overload it, just need to keep it moving. So that's the uh, non-gear side. Here's the gear side then. We'll pull a cap that holds the, the nut that holds the shaft so that we can remove the handle. And leave that nut right in the cap. This is typical of what you'll find on a beef, uh, bait feeder or a bait caster. You'll have a C-clip that's holding the axle shaft on the pinion gear. And it should be a 10 millimeter nut. Let's give it a check and see. It is. So we should be able to pull the nut without pulling the... Um, the 
C clip and sometimes we can get the handle off. Nope, not going to get the handle off in this situation. So I'm going to want to work the C clip off. This one truly is a C clip as opposed to an E clip. Looks like the letter C and doesn't have the middle bar there. You'll notice a couple of things. If this is new to you, I do wear a protective glove. It's a latex glove and I also use a parts tray. So if you're uh, seeing this for the first time, that's what I'm doing. All right, we also have a little washer in there that has to come out. And put that into the tray as well. Also, what I recommend is that we take pictures along the way because when you're taking those pictures, it's going to tell you where pieces and parts go. If you get lost on reinstall, you can go back and reference those pictures. Okay, we're going to back the, the handle off now. Okay, handle is off. This looks a little... And then we have a bushing that sits on the collar underneath. I'm just going to turn that over and lay the bushing on top of that. With that, then we can go ahead and pull the side plate. It helps to have a variety of tools. This, I've been lucky with this particular screwdriver in that it has a fairly fine point to it. But uh, if you have a broader screwdriver, you may need to use a micro screwdriver to get these out. But in this case, uh, I've been generally fortunate here. And again, those are going to go into my parts tray, particularly these small parts. You don't want to lose them. They're dickens if they uh, they fall off your workbench. We should be able to remove the side plate then. There we go. Just need to get some leverage. And this is pretty typical of what you'll see inside bait casters. Uh, we just did one on um, the ambassador. It's not too far different. We have a yoke. We have springs that are holding the yoke together. The yoke holds the spool gear. Up top we have a mechanism which is going to push the yoke in and out. i pull these springs before I lose them. When you pull the yoke in and out, that's going to pull the spool gear off of the spool to allow for free spooling. That's how this is in full engagement. You'll see the spool gear is pulled away from the back plate, allowing the spool to spin freely. Then you trip, typically have a trip mechanism here, which is going to push that back up. So what we want to do here is just make sure that the anti-reverse, which is a pinch anti-reverse, the main gears and the spool gear get uh, serviced and are, are working properly. So I'm going to pull the main gear off. Here's our drive gear, which intersects with the uh, free spool release that's going to kick back. We have a pressure operated anti reverse that's working fine, nothing needed to be done there. I am going to pull the yoke because I do like to put grease onto the spool gear. And I'm going to put some on there and I'm going to put some in the channel where it rides on the yoke as well. Just knocked it out, that didn't help. But, uh, can do that. And if you weren't paying attention to how it came off, you'd go back to your pictures and see which side is which in terms of the gears working properly. Right, I'm going to reinstall that. wanting to drop out on me here. Now one of the beauties of this is that this um, yoke is offset so you can't put it in incorrectly and that also you notice that there's the cups for the springs that we took out around that side. So if you had any questions go back to your pictures make sure you take the pictures along the way. To reinstall the setup that we have here you have to put the yoke in first you can't put this main gear on and then uh, and check. It just doesn't work. And we've got a uh, typical setup. One drag and a uh, tension washer on the back. 
This has got oil on it. It's a hard drag. It's okay to have the oil on that. I'm just going to wipe off any excess. But that's a uh, like a, a composite drag. Put that back in. Put the main gear back on. And then we had these two clips which went on. These are tensioning clips for the star drag adjustment. They're going to go beneath that bushing. And then we can put the two springs in. And we can go ahead and put the side plate back on. You have to press down. You need to be careful as you do this. You want to press down and the two holes in the the side plate are going to line up with those springs, which is where the screws are going to go in. There you go, we got that. So I was making sure that I didn't trap a spring in either of those um, screw holes. Because if you trapped it in there, uh, the case wouldn't sit properly and you probably would ruin the spring. Okay. With one in, your, your hands become a little more free. Grab the other screw. Load that in. And then before I go much further, I just want to test it, make sure that we're, we're turning freely. Put the, uh, the free spool in and make sure we can fire it back out, which we can, which means we're good there. The bushing goes on next, and we can put our adjuster on. Now, right now it's spinning freely here. If you get stuck like that, grab like a, a little needle nose pliers or something, just come in be underneath it, just to kind of grab it. Sometimes that doesn't work, use a pick. You just need to hold that main shaft. And I'm looking for a thinner, thinner something. I'm going to get creative here. I'm going to use my braid scissors to hold it. Just to firm it up until you can grab it from the top. So sometimes you just got to kind of MacGyver it. I'm going to do the same thing with this up here since it's working. There we go. Who to thunk? All right. Once we have the star adjuster on, we can go ahead and put the tensioner for the handle on. Put the handle back on. the handle nut back on. That's always good. You, eye, you can eye your parts tray. And, uh, it'll tell you whether you've got everything pretty much done or if you've got more work to do. Or if you've forgotten something along the way. So here's that little washer that we took out. Let's sit on the top there. And then that C-clip. So it's a nice solid reel. Certainly for the time it was well made. It still is. It had a lot of fishing uh, planned for it and a lot of fishing remains in this reel. Just take care of it. I'm just trying to use a needle nose plier to set this in the groove. Sometimes a fingernail will work too. I get nervous and skittish with these things because they do fly if you don't get them done right. There you go. I think I have enough strength in my hands to at least get it started. And then the last pinch here with the needle nose pliers will show you how it goes. There you go. Now we're back in with that. And make sure we turn that before we go put it back together. Grab the uh, Handle set. Good there. We've got all of this creased on the side. Back in, back on. Get 
it a turn, make sure that everything's working before you tighten down your screws here. And that's it. That's the Daiwa Procaster Lite PL100 by, by version. It's a nice solid reel. It was well made. I, I'm kind of interested in when this was made. I'm thinking it was made first decade of the 2000s, I'm guessing. But I really don't know. If anybody has one that they bought new and uh, could tell me, that would be appreciated. trouble grabbing this one. Here we go. Sometimes your hand strength isn't what you would like it to be. So Steve, that's the last one of the batch. We've done your 306. We've done your uh, Shimano. And now we've done your Procaster. There you go. All right. Give it a spin, make sure that that's working. If it's a little tight for you, you can always adjust it with the spool tensioner on the side. Make it spin a little bit faster. We're in good shape. Okay, thank you uh, for watching this. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. If you like it, please subscribe. We're always open for uh, adding to our subscriber base. Let your fishing friends know about the channel as well. Again, thank you. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.